Start here in about a minute's time. Okay, let's start. Okay, so today we're going to go through what we call succession. I hope you guys watched the two videos with my comments um, last week that I posted after I couldn't log on um, during the lesson time. But I posted the two videos with my comments on the interactions um, last week. Uh, we were talking about uh, the interactions within a population and the division of labor as well as leadership in um, within a pride and within a, um, a herd. So today we're going to do succession which focus a little bit more on um, plants than animals. In succession uh, normally what we find and you'll see is Animals is like the very last part that comes in during succession. Before we can have, uh, before we can have animals in any area, we need to have plants feeding those animals, uh, the herbivores, and then from the herbivores, we'll get your carnivores coming in. And it's very similar to what we would find in the Bible, which is very nice if you take a look at Genesis uh, about the succession that plants had to come first. Plants were first on land. Plants were created first, and then afterwards we could add animals to that that could eat the plants. You can't have it the other way around. You can't have the animals if you don't give them something to eat first. And that's normally the plants, and of course plants feed themselves through photosynthesis. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so... We're going to take a look at community change over time. Uh, this is called succession. And for today, we're going to primarily focus on primary succession. There's two types of succession, primary and secondary succession. And so what we're basically talking about, and this just covers the whole lesson. This is a summary of the whole lesson, the first page. So I'm not going to go into too much detail over here, is if we take a look at what, what is happening here is some type of event like a fire that destroys all of the plant material and the animals will also flee out of an area. And then what we find is slowly but surely nature repairs itself and comes back. And so we're gonna have pioneer species and in the pioneer species, we're gonna find some, uh, things like mosses, we're going to find things like uh, the first uh, per, uh, perennial grass. We're going to find mosses. And then as we go along, we're going to get our intermediate species, which grows normally higher in, in height. And so we're going to have certain bushes. And as we move along, you're getting uh, trees coming in. And then you get a, a wider variety of trees coming in and variety is going to be the key to what we call a climax community. Where there's a lot of, and remember the word from last year, biodiversity. There's lots of biodiversity in a climax community. While if we take a look at this side, there's very low biodiversity. So communities change over time as a result of populations within the community changing, new populations coming in, 
and are competing of populations. This is an orderly and gradual change occurring over a number of years. And that's going to be important. That it's not happening quickly. It happens over uh, quite a few years. The change is known as succession. And simple communities made up of a few populations will develop into more complex communities. And this has to do with the biodiversity of a population. Um, if we talk biodiversity, the less um, variety of species there are, the less the biodiversity is, the more variety of species there are, the more stable a community becomes, and the higher the biodiversity. Um, there's two types of succession, primary and secondary succession. And the key principle between primary and secondary succession is where do they start? If it's bare and there's no plants, there's no seeds before, there's nothing, then it's going to be primary succession. But when we talk about secondary succession, secondary succession is when we have um, already some seeds in the ground, we already have some plants, plant roots under the ground that can start growing and we got like get a fire, but it doesn't destroy everything. It, it, Whatever is under the ground is still there. Uh, a little bit above the ground is still alive. And so that, that is basically the difference between primary and secondary succession. Yeah, okay. Now, let's go along. Primary succession begins in areas that have not previously been inhabited, no seeds, uh, nothing. Uh, let me, I just want to close my, one of the apps here that's making a noise, just give me a second. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, primary succession begins in areas that have not previously been inhabited, no seed, no roots under the ground, so no plants whatsoever, such as barren rock, sand dunes, or lakes and dams. And we especially, the, the most common example is volcanic rock. We have a volcanic activity, burns away everything, and then slowly you get that, that volcanic rock, which is very mineral rich, starting to become soil. You get your first lichens, you get your first mosses coming in. After that, you can get some grasses, and mostly the seeds will come in via either water or wind. So seeds will come into that either, either via water or via wind. Pioneer organisms that are the first plants colonize these areas, as we said, lichens, algae, mosses, on the bare rock, and they create cracks that fill up with particles of sand. Because for plants to grow properly, we need the roots to go into the ground. And for that, we need sand, we need soil. And they also start creating the first organic material, which we refer to as humus, if you can remember from grade eight and grade 10. As soil begins to form, mosses will colonize the area, trapping water, soil particles, and any dead organic matter. It also forms part of the humus. Now, there's a typical example. Uh, what we have here is this is actually volcanic rock, uh, but you can see people have walked a path into this volcanic rock. But you can see these plants, these are already shrubs now. They're quite a bit into their succession. But you can see over here that there's nothing. And there's um, basically ground is starting to form, soil is starting to form, and you can get lichens into this, uh, uh, lichens into this area. You can get uh, mosses into this area and finally grasses and shrubs like we find at the back there. Grasses and small bushes become next established as soil starts to become more. Later on shrubs and small trees begin to grow in suitable habitats in what we call a grassland. As plant communities become more complex they support a greater number of animals so the more plants there are we can find the more animals are going to move to the area because there's something for them to eat. And that's going to provide food and shelter for them. If, 
environmental factors are right, small trees will grow, start growing into larger trees and then they receive sunlight through competitive exclusion and they grow higher and higher and higher and start to dominate over other plant forms. Give me a second. Just thought somebody. So just thought somebody was hooting at the gate. Okay, so um, yes, the difference between a, a prime and near community and but it's mosses and then your climax community with your large trees and you can see there's lots of barren rock over here and over here you can barely see the you can can't even see the swirl there if you take a look from the top. Okay, so animals relying on these trees for food and shelter will also move into the area, changing the community once again. Uh, when the community cannot develop any further, we call it a climax community, and it usually is a, a forest. Now, the climax community for any area is not necessarily a forest. If it cannot sustain a forest, if the temperatures and the water content in that area cannot sustain a forest, then it's never going to uh, develop into a forest. So it might stop at, for example, in a lot of our areas, we live in a grassland area, and it's never going to become a forest because there's simply not enough water, temperatures are too high, and so forth. So it, a climax community is not necessarily a forest, and um, that um, your ultimate climax community will be a forest, but then the conditions need to be right. Climax community usually remains more or less the same over hundreds and thousands of years and is supported by a particular climate. Climate, climate sorry, climate. Okay, so succession. Start with barren ground, rock and dunes, lakes and dams. You get your pioneer species, your algae, your mosses, and then they start to break down the rock. Then you get your, um, more, as you get more soil, you're gonna get grasses and small shrubs. And then finally, you're going to get over many of year, many years, you're going to get started trees and animal populations moving into an area. Secondary succession. Okay, so secondary succession is quite a bit different. Secondary succession is, for example, if there was a fire, so there's already some some there's already plants, there's already seeds in the ground, there's some roots in the ground, and they start to grow. And of course. You can think that this is much quicker than we would have with a uh, primary succession. And here it shows a very nice diagram uh, or photos, uh, time lapse photos of a primary, a secondary succession happens where they've cleared an area here where there's no trees, there's no plant growth, and over time you get shrubs and then larger trees and then go into even larger and larger trees and the biodiversity increases over many, many years. Now we don't have many um, pictures like this because it takes quite a while, 150 years to take um, a, a photograph like that. So it has to be succeeded by, by several people to be able to take pictures like that. Okay, so it's the re-establishment, secondary succession, re-establishment of a community that's been destroyed and left barren. Pioneer species may include weeds and uh, occur um, and occurs quickly since they are already um, in the soil and little competition for them. When you leave the competition out, suddenly these weeds start to grow because now there's enough light and nutrients for them and they can actually compete against the, the previously uh, bigger, uh, more competitive species that aren't there anymore. Over time, more and more animals are attracted to the area and food chains and fit webs begin to develop. The habitat is modified each time a new community establishes itself. And then once a community becomes stable and has little change, we also refer to it as a climax community. Succession may not ever reach an end point since ecological systems are always changing somewhat. 
Now, secondary succession is the reestablishment of a community that has been destroyed. And um, that could be by fire mostly, could be by floods. Um, and any uh, the, and many other natural occurrences. Um, and then the same process happens as primary succession, just it ha normally happens quicker. Um, and since there's already soil as well, it's not barren rock, uh, physical conditions are suitable for growth. And so that's also another reason why it happens much faster than primary succession. And also normally our pioneer species include weeds and seeds that start to germinate. Okay, here we again have another example of pioneer species, your mosses um, that are growing there. Um, and normally uh, the seeds come via wind or water as we already discussed. Climax community we discussed already, so I'm not gonna go through that again. Okay, so let's talk about human influence. Okay, so, um, we sometimes a lot of times what we find now is that plant communities never reach their climax community simply because of human interference uh also because of climate um climate changes and natural um, or natural disasters um there's different natural climax communities correlate closely with climatic regions in the western guy fine fine boss is your climax community and in the free state we um, grassland it ends earlier is your climax community. Okay, so um, we discussed most of this already. Yes, I'm not gonna go through that again. Okay, so for your homework, I'm gonna post two other videos discussing this uh, succession. So you need to watch the other videos on succession as well. I'm going to post them onto the Google Classroom now. And then you need to just draw two diagrams. Guys, don't, don't go and spend a lot of artist's time on this, the, these diagrams. Please simplify these diagrams when you are drawing them. Okay. Okay, so that is it for today's lesson. Uh, we are having a meeting after this to discuss whether we might be having a face-to-face -face lessons again at HP in the afternoons. So we'll keep you posted, but it will not happen by tomorrow. So tomorrow's lesson, I'll still definitely see you for Zoom. And for those of you who's not going to, who are not going to school at the moment, we'll definitely see you in the Zooms anyway for the rest of the time. Thank you. Are there any questions with regards to a specific lesson? So, yes. Uh, <clears throat> what, what's the main difference between primary and, and secondary succession? Okay, so primary succession, totally barren land, normally rock, no seeds, no previous plant, plant growth, and normally no soil whatsoever. Secondary succession, conditions are already right for the plant. So with secondary succession, what we get is that you have, uh, you already have soil that's broken down. You probably all already have soil uh, seeds inside that soil. You already have some plants inside that soil, maybe some roots that can start growing again. So secondary succession starts from, uh, happens quicker because there's already some plant material and the soil conditions are already right for plant growth. Primary succession, normally soil has to form first and so forth. Okay, thank okay. you. What will be examined for term three? I've looked at the test today. Tep was asking what will be examined for term three. Okay, I, I've, I haven't got a definite answer for you yet. I've looked at a test that I moderated today. It still needs to be retyped. Um, but as soon as we set the date, then you will know what, what we'll be testing in term three and I'll let you know. It's probably any, everything, um, that you haven't been tested on already. Also, another thing is that unfortunately for you guys, um, at HP, you're gonna have to redo the test that you did last time. 
uh, you were not allowed uh, allowed to take that test home and mark it at home. Uh, so uh, we unfortunately that made the test um, uh, you cannot do the test like that uh, because you could have made corrections off afterwards and you'll have to redo that test. Okay. And then is there a relationship between primary and secondary succession? Yes, it's the same process. The one just happens quicker and has a bit of a head start. Okay, guys, any other questions? We'll let you know about that test as soon as we um, it's finalized and then we'll set the date. Okay, guys, then I'm gonna log off if there's no further questions. Thank you. I will see you tomorrow on this pl platform again, and probably we'll have an answer for you whether we're going to do live lessons as, um, and not live, well, face to face lessons again. Okay.